Welcome to this video, a new part of Endgame Strategy. Yeah, this is um, a video about a very classical theme, good bishop against bad bishop. There are many um, examples, of course, in chess, um, where a good bishop is dominating a bad bishop and will win the game at the end. We need to study lots of examples to really get... Um, yeah, get all the points that come up in this endgame. I've selected one position that is, um, I think, fairly instructive. It is a case where black here, in this case, we have Kromnik playing black, um, playing uh, Luke von Veli, um, where black does not have a super clear advantage in terms of the pawn structure. It is clear that he has the better bishop, as there is a pawn on d4, which is limiting its white's bishop and black in relation to the key pawn here on d5 has the good one. But it's not like that white has misplaced all its pawns on the on the wrong color complex. So it's not um, super trivial to, to really make headway here. This is why this is a good example. We should note that this was played in um, 1990 in the European Junior Championship. So Fen Veli at the time 17 or 18 years old and Kromnik I think 15 years old, so a junior event. Let's see how Kromnik proceeds. It is um, his turn to move here, black to move. And the, the first move is in fact absolutely essential. What is black's first move? He played g5. g5 is absolutely necessary to get anywhere in this position. Why? The reason is that white, as mentioned, has this misplaced pawn on d4 in a way. No, misplaced is maybe the wrong word, but it's uh, not ideally placed in relation to the bishop. But other than that, his pawn structure is not that bad. What black wants to do, and now actually can force, is to advance his g-pawn to g4 which fixes the pawn on g3. This means that white has two weaknesses actually and two pawns that are placed on the wrong color complex, on the dark squares where the bishop is. If white, on the other hand, would have, if, if he has time to play g4, then the whole thing is just not as bad. Let's say if black would have played a nothing move like that, then white goes here and for example, after stuff like g6, you go g4. And this is um, not as critical. Yeah, This pawn is uh, defensible and uh, cannot be attacked by the bishop. Very important by the f6 bishop. So black absolutely has to strike first with the move g5. Kromnik, of course, played that. Yeah, white really... Um, has nothing great that he can do. He went king f3 and black went g4 and back. What is the next step? What we have accomplished now is fixed two weaknesses. Great. But what next? The big issue is that we can only win if we somehow manage to enter with our king. Without the king, we won't um, make any substantial progress. And this basically um, yeah, suggests to suggest the next maneuver. The white king always will stay here on e3 or d3 to block the access to the crucial e4 square. This means that we have to find some other route. And well, chess, chess is quite a logical game sometimes. The only route can be all the way back here on the queen side. However, if we are doing that, we will yeah, move the king away from those pawns. And white might get into f4 for counterplay. So if we play a very careless move like that, white will even win the pawn immediately. So this means that we have to control the f4 square. Therefore, Kromnik's move is very logical. Not king e6, of course, but bishop e7. Bishop c3. Bishop d6. We have improved our bishop. This bishop now attacks this weakness, which we had fixed 
at the start of the endgame and it makes sure that the white king is not ever crossing this this line yeah of course also this has to be defended so white was doomed to this passive move king e1 yeah and now black can start um, the second step of his uh, series of mini plans the king has to go over here we go king c2 yeah still what next isn't this like a fortress hmm almost <laughs> but there is still one uh, one bullet that uh, that we can fire of course a5 the only way forward is really to exchange those two pawns to make sure that the king can enter it is um the only way forward yeah we have no idea besides that except that we cannot really win by by zugzwang on those two pawns without the king there is nothing that can be done yeah king d3 well, was played now and of course now a4 this was the whole point of the operation yeah white now only has a very sad choice he can take on a4 or he can allow the move a3 yeah if white tries to play this this just makes some sense of course if black now captures we all of a sudden cover all the crucial squares is white but black has the stronger move a3 that's very important king b1 oops bishop to b4 yeah and this is of course now very nice for black what should white do now yeah you cannot really trade and bishop f2 bishop d2 is also very nice we have this this additional resource of the king move now yeah we should briefly look at the king and pawn endgame if white uh, white captures we win at the end the d pawn is simply too far advanced plus the space advantage this is a very important point this bishop before to break through white however he captured on a4 and now black takes yeah this is now a very pure example where white has two weaknesses and black has managed to enter with the king if um, white plays now he played bishop f2 but let's say he plays king c2 yeah just uh, to look at alternatives what is um, black's play now what should black do now yeah we can go king to a3 and here we see a key element of uh, of almost all endgame types zugzwang now it's white to move and whatever he does he's not uh, going to be happy about it if um, white yeah white cannot move along this diagonal as g3 drops if you go here black will make progress with that intending this or after king d3 coming to b3 this is uh, something that we will see in the game and uh, well there is no move this is why white played bishop f3 uh, f2 it is um, it is leading now to the already mentioned position king b3 and again we're dealing with the zugzwang situation white can only now shuffle between those two uh, two uh, squares if he allows the black king to approach then this pawn will fall it's impossible now for white to defend the pawn simply oops simply a route like that we win the pawn bishop e1 was played king b2 yeah and again a zugzwang this move is not helping any other king move we approach so what else is there there really is only again the bishop f2 move 
and now king c1 black is advancing further and <clears throat> what should white do it's really um, there's really nothing that he can do he played the the check king d1 bishop f2 yeah and now what what is the next step we have the activated the king to the utmost and any king move now like this or this is answered by the the side step so the king cannot move it is a tempo a fight for tempo um with the bishop with this bishop and what is the way forward black now played this move which is very strong as white now really doesn't have any um, any great alternative he played king e3 but um, we can also look at at other other options bishop e3 for example we have king e1 also having this idea king e1 bishop f4 bishop b4 it is a very very slow process but ultimately we will get to one of the pawns it's just a case where there are two weaknesses as mentioned that are fixed and we have entered with the king normally two weaknesses that are also somewhat far apart plus an active king that is um, is invading should win the game due to Zugzwang motifs and uh, here white is um, ultimately helpless against the loss of one of those pawns in the game if we uh, go back there after bishop a3 when really played uh, king e3 check on c1 king to d3 and now the final stroke very nice bishop d2 yeah a very nice zugzwang what should i do now the king cannot move you have to move the bishop yeah he went uh, to e3 alternatively there is only bishop g1 what else and uh, well this is this is kind of sad but <laughs> It is also quite quite easily winning now. This this bishop is now uh, just killed, yeah. And coming over. So in the game he went bishop e3. Yeah, and now, of course, not the trade, <laughs> but bishop e1 attacking the weakness. Bishop f4 only move. Bishop f2. Yeah, and now. The problem is that white is running out of moves. What should he play? He played bishop e5, king e1. Yeah, and uh, this is very simple. So white needs to do something about that. He has to go for some sort of counterplay with the king. This is why he went king to c3. Yeah, and now black can actually return king e2. A return is maybe the wrong word but switch directions king b4 king f3 king c5 and king e4 and this is the absolutely final touch this is attacked this is attacked d5 is protected and white now loses one of the pawns due to zugzwang just excellent right this was um, a very nice and clean demonstration of good against bad bishop it is very important to to note that you can really only win if we jump back a little bit to the to the start of the whole thing you can only really win or let's say hope for a win because it's still a difficult uh, thing to actually win at the end as we have seen it required precision when you have you should have two weaknesses to attack at least two pawns on the wrong um, wrong color complex and some idea to enter with the king note that in this um, kind of situation if we just um, let's say change the position like that the whole thing is just a draw there is absolutely no way for black to enter the position white will just shuffle on these two squares probably get the bishop over to f2 or something like that and then just stay the whole thing is only a win due to the idea to enter with the king if you cannot enter with the king you cannot win 
So um, a very nice um, example. If we switch back to the actual game, we see that here the whole thing is um, evolving around some step-by-step -step planning. Bishop to d6 first, yeah, getting this set up, hindering the white king from entering. And then we go to the second stage where black is pushing his a pawn to enter with the king. Yeah, and after that, we have to activate the king to the utmost. This, in, in this case, we were able to go to d1, and then it's about Zugzwang. This is really a concrete calculation. We need to calculate step by step and precisely how to use Zugzwang to finally get to one of the key squares like f3 and, and d4. Yeah, this is a matter also of patience, but very often you're in a situation where you can also um, yeah, consider very carefully what to do because you're not very much in a hurry. Those kind of um, Zugzwang um, situation, setting up those, uh, it's very often not like a, a one-time chance. You can maneuver a bit and try out various setups. It's often a good idea not to rush things and just see uh, and probe around a little bit and only then really uh, get to a point where you make substantial progress. There's no shame in repeating moves or trying to improve slowly. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this uh, very nice, simple, but very nice example of good against bad bishop. There are many more complex um, positions that uh, can be examined and I'm pretty sure I will return to this um, at a later stage in the series. Thanks for watching.